I'll now go through a couple of example beam calculations. Uh, the first of which is a simply supported beam. So in the simply supported beam, we're going to make some assumptions on it. We're going to assume a fairly simple load of 0 0.5 kPa for dead load and 1.5 kPa for live load. Um, we are going to assume a two meter load width for that. And we're gonna assume this is in an office building floor mirror. As for most beams, we're going to assume that the loads are all at the top of the flange. And we're going to assume that because this is a floor bearer, all the joists provide a lateral bracing. So joists spaced at same time, 100 millimeters, lateral arm brace length is there for 600 millimeters. At the supports, I'm going to assume that this is bearing um, down onto a beam below or onto a column below um, with 150 millimeter bearing length. And I'm going to assume that both of these are partial restraints. Because of course, if it's bearing, then the bottom flange is the thing being supported. That's the non-critical flange. And uh, that would be a partial restraint. Um, what's going to end up working out here, and I'll show you how to figure this out, is a 180 UB 22.2 in grade 300 plus. So I'll go through this procedure in the ClearCalx platform. To get to ClearCalx, you simply open up your web browser, go to clearcalx.com, log in, and I'll create a new project here. I can specify whatever names or project numbers or clients I would like for my uh, project here. I can specify dates, I can specify project addresses. Um, the address will help set some defaults for things like wind loading if that's relevant. For our floor bearer, that's not gonna be relevant. Um, and you can set a number of project defaults here as well. The ones I'll make note of here, uh, we're going to have a maximum beam height. Uh, that is so that our beam can fit between the floor and ceiling for whatever my structure is here. I mean, keep the default here at 500 millimeters, but you'll see that that actually does affect the design. Um, we automatically give you a warning if you have exceeded that limit. Further down on this page as well, you can also set custom load cases. You can act, by default, we use those that are specified or recommended in this 1170.0. You can actually edit these if you would like. Um, if you have different serviceability criteria that you prefer to use in your particular organization, then you can edit these as well. So for our simply supported beam, I will add a new calculation for a steel beam. And I said that this was a floor bearer. So that will open up a calculator here. At the top of the screen, we'll go through some basic assumptions that we make use of and confirm the version of the standard that this is based upon. Um, like this webinar, our assumptions are that your detailing is checked separately, your beam is of a uniform cross section, um, and that uh, net areas. In our case, we're going to assume are the worst case in this um, particular calculator. So this was a five meter beam in total length. I said uh, bearing length was 150 millimeters with partial restraints on either end. I'm gonna keep my load simple um, and get rid of the default roof and wall loads. Um, as well as our default alternate pose load. Um, but that leaves us with a 0 0.5 permanent load, uh, KPA permanent load, and 1.5 KPA imposed load. And we said that our load width was two meters. So when I enter all of that in, you'll see that my deflections notably exceed limits. So this is giving me a deflection control beam. I can fairly quickly look and see which beams are possible and work or don't work. 
by clicking on the filter icon next to the member name. So you notice the first few deans on this list are, have a uh, red X next to them. Those are our 610 or 530 UVs. And those have that red X because the total depth of them is greater than 500 millimeters. So while they definitely work for capacity, they're too tall. They won't fit in our ceiling area. So I'm gonna scroll down a bit further and find the uh, smallest beam that still works in this. So it looks like that's a 180 UV 22.2 grade 300 plus, as long as I'm sticking with the UVs here. So if I select that, that will then go recalculate. It will show me that my maximum short-term deflection is what's governing here um, at 88% of capacity. And scroll down and see uh, the relatively simple shear moment and deflection diagrams. And I can uh, look at these for any of my load cases for 1.35 G or any of my individual unfactored loads as well. I can look at what the live load effect is on its own. And you can uh, mouse over and see exactly what your value is at any location along the beam. Exactly what your live load deflection or whatever is anywhere along the beam. We'll also show you what the reactions are due to the unfactored load or to whatever you select for your graph load case here. Um, so I can see that the effect of my imposed load is a 7.5 kilonewton reaction. That's an uh, imposed load only at either support here. Now within our calculations, um, we'll also note the character of imposed load is defaulted to an office floor. We did say this was an office building floor bearer. Um, I can add more complex loads. We have a check in here pulling what the maximum beam depth is. If you would like to override that project default, that project defaults at 500 millimeters, you can edit this value here. But otherwise, we go through then all of the possible calculations here. So if you would like to see the results for any individual load case, you can expand the load case analysis section here and see your shear moment and reaction results for every load case uh, and deflections for every service load case. When we go through our section capacity or member capacities, uh, we're determining whether the section is compact, non-compact, or slender, and plugging that into the appropriate value for the effective section modulus, um, as shown here. And of course, you can expand all of these and see what the uh, equation reference is from, in this case, clause 521 for the effective section modulus, um, and different possible equations that are used and which one was used in this case. For the moment capacity, we are calculating the member capacity. We are calculating this individually for every single span. Because this is one, a single span design, uh, we only see one row here, but we are calculating out what that maximum uh, moment demand is and the moment at the quarter points and therefore what the alpha sub M value is. So for our simply supported beam and for any simply supported uniformly loaded beam, alpha sub M is equal to 1.17. We then calculate a slenderness reduction factor and that depends upon the span type. So we're actually giving you what the span type is according to the standard. Um, so we've figured out here that this is span type PP. Um, and looking up the appropriate KT, KR, and KL, KL values to determine our effective length um, in here. And then, of course, going through the rest of the uh, member moment capacity calculation, picking the minimum of the M sub B and M sub S. Um, and we do something similar, again, for shear and bending moment interaction. For bearing capacity, we're calculating this out for uh, each individual support, and you can follow through all the equations in here for calculating out alpha sub C um, and then ending up with a uh, bearing utilization. And if you'd like to see, of course, any of these values to full precision, you can mouse over them and see our fully accurate calculations.
If bending and bearing is relevant, that's also calculated. And for deflection, you'll see for each individual span, the short-term, long-term, and post load deflections in there as well. Now, that's a simply supported beam design. Uh, we can then do our second example, which is for a complex beam. We're going to take a multi-span beam here with two interior spans and one cantilever span. So we're going to assume the first span is four meters, second span is 11 meters, and a five meter cantilever. Um, we're going to take the same loads as before, and we're going to take this as what's that totals to 20 meters, and otherwise the same assumptions as before. We'll find that a larger beam is necessary for this, um, but we will go through all of the details on how exactly that works. We can take a shortcut here and just duplicate the existing short, sim simply supported beam um, and see exactly what we had, but in new sheet. So we said that this was a 20 meter beam. So I'm going to type in 20 meters as my total length with supports at five meters, or excuse me, four meters and 15 meters. Bearing length of 150. And you'll see as I'm typing this, we are recalculating as I'm going. So you can see exactly what every new calculation is. Now for my interior support here, uh, that has two interior spans on either side, the critical flange here is the actually the bottom flange because the bottom flange is in compression at this particular support. So you may have a fully restrained support here or you might have a laterally only restrained support here. I'm going to take it as laterally only restrained. So this will actually be a PL span. We're then keeping the same loadings here. Um, along the full length of the beam. And you can see in the final results here that we are way over capacity. Um, oh, also quickly of note, uh, when I added that cantilever, this table for deflection limit, setting the deflection limit automatically expanded. So I now have interior spans and cantilevers that I can set different deflection limits for. So now we'll go into our member selector. And again, the top beams here would work in capacity, except that they are, they exceed our maximum limit for um, the beam height. So scrolling down, it looks like a 410 UB 53.7 is the smallest beam that will work for this design. Again, you can click on that, everything recalculates, and you see that we're again governed by short-term deflection at 91% capacity for that. Now, of course, for a multi-span beam like this, calculations get a bit more complex. So for our member moment capacity, we have more complex calculations in here where we are considering um, both interior and cantilever spans and considered separately for the different types of spans present. We also have our bearing capacity at three different supports now. So these are calculated separately again for each individual support and the appropriate demands for at, located at each support. And again, we can see all of this in our now more complex diagrams here as well. 